And as people are rolling in, um, they're just going to miss the opening spiel anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, so welcome to, this is a Google Sites training. I know I saw some people that had signed up were thinking maybe it would be Google Slides. We'll talk about Google Slides a little bit, but this is definitely how to set up a Google website for your classroom and to integrate it with other parts of the Google G Suite um, apps. So before we get started, I, I'm gonna let you know that because I'm in my basement, I have, um, well, I have two little guys that run back and forth pretty frequently, and they might even come downstairs and try to talk to me. So um, I think that's just kind of the nature of the game that we're playing these days. So um, I'm just giving you a heads up that there might be some loud noises every once in a while. And uh, please bear with me on that. And because I'm in the basement, I'm a little far away from my internet, and I have kind of gone in and out in different trainings to save bandwidth, it's easier for me to just turn off my uh, video. It saves that so that at least you can hear my voice and still see my screen and what I'm doing. So then uh, hopefully, you know, we're able to get through the whole training. I'm going to be recording the whole thing. I did just start. I pressed record so that everything will be available for you. Once this is all over, I'll send everything up and it'll be on the PD page where you registered for and got the link to join the training today, as well as all of the slides. I will start out in slides, but then I'm gonna jump out of this all together and go into Google Sites so that I can show you and walk you through the process of what it would be like to build your own website. Um, before we actually get started, I wanna introduce, um, Sheila Parnell is gonna be monitoring the chat for me. I cannot multitask. It would be a lot of dead space as far as you know me having to stop and read the chat so Sheila is going to take care of all of that. So feel free to pop any of your questions in there and she will make sure that they all get answered. And uh, if you are not muted already, if you could go ahead and, and do that right now, there's just like little background noises that tend to be forgotten about as we're sitting and watching. So if you could mute, then it'll help, you know, eliminate some of that distraction. Um, my name is Katie Tully, and I am one of the three facilitators for IU21. I primarily work with the emotional support students with the IU, but I have experience in working with deaf and hard of hearing students as well. I've been a teacher for 13 years. I'm a New Jersey transplant, so um, you're just gonna have to deal with that, I guess. But um, I'm very happy to be here with the IU, and I've been really enjoying doing a lot of these trainings on remote learning. So I hope that you enjoy this um, as much as I enjoy kind of providing this information to you today. So with that being said, I'm going to turn off my screen and then just get jump right into this. That's my contact information. And again, you'll have access to this after. I'll just post everything right up there. So welcome to this afternoon's Google Sites training. I know some of us are just getting up and running for our IU staff. Today was day one of remote learning going live. Uh, and some of you have been at this for a few weeks now. The adjustment to this has been extremely difficult for some of us. And I feel like I've probably heard the word unprecedented more times in the past month than in my entire life combined. Uh, I gotta say, I feel like we're all doing a really great job. The amount of positivity I'm seeing and hearing is a true testament to your dedication to your job and to your students. So I wanna start by saying thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, Google Sites is Google's free product for creating your own website. It provides a framework and all the tools to make a site that's really simple or it could be really complex. It's really up to you. Some of the things educators can do within Google Sites includes posting your course information, creating an online file cabinet of your handouts. You could create a blog. It could be serving as a wiki that your students could come into and edit content on, assigning each student a page to maintain and share their ideas. You could have your students create digital portfolios. You could post your calendar sharing videos, images, slides, recordings, any other educational material. 
create multiple sites within the same account. So anytime you create a website, it gets housed within Google Sites. Any contact forms that you want to have parents or students fill out. And you also have the option to lock up your site so that only certain people can see it. So your permissions, you have access to change that. It's, a, it's not a public site. And I'm going to show you how to do all of those things today. This is a pretty, it's a general overview, but I am going to jump into some of the more detailed aspects of it as well. Before we get started, this is a pretty neat trick. I feel that I wanted, I just wanted to give you this little bit of information before we even get started. When you're sharing any file from your Google Drive, you want to make sure that you verify the settings so that when you share it out, other people can see it because anything has to be set to the option of anyone with the link can view it or to public on the web. Otherwise, when you send it out to someone, they'll get that white screen that says you don't have permission to view it. So what you should do is just create a folder specific to your site and set the permissions to that folder to public or to anyone with the link can view it, whichever you prefer. That way, anything you drop into that folder is automatically just going to change to those permissions. And then whatever you pull out of that folder will already have the permission that you want it to have. And I'm gonna, before we get into sites, I'm gonna show you what that looks like, but I wanted to make sure I went over that because I think it's a really important just even tip to have in general, as far as sharing files. Uh, and if you make a folder and put everything into the folder, it eliminates that, that hassle of having to change every single document. Okay, so I am gonna jump out of the slide deck right now and head right over into sites.google.com slash new. That is one, one way to get to your sites. I must have typed it wrong. Yeah, I did. So you go to sites.google.com slash new and it'll bring you to all of your sites pages. If you forget to do that, you can also, if you're already logged into your account, Go to your trusty little waffle over here. Come down into your G Suite applications. Find your sites. And come over here and click on new Google sites. They updated this, the, the G Suite sites accounts about four years ago. But for some reason, it still takes you to this page. And you just have to go through the extra step of clicking on new Google sites and it takes you over here. So let's talk that, let's talk about that folder real quick. In your Google Drive, which mine is a mess, you have all of these folders. And for some reason, when all this started, I just decided to make the folder I pull everything from. I, made, I named it COVID. So I don't know. And I wanna make sure that everything I pull out of this folder has the right permission settings. So I click on that and then I come right up here and I click on the person or the people. And if there's nobody that has access to it, it'll have a sharing option. As of right now, this folder is public on the web. Anybody can find it and view it. If I wanna change those settings, which I do, I come down to sharing settings and I can click this drop down box. And it's gonna give me all of the options that I can draw from. I can change it to make it so that only specific people have it, anyone at the IU can have it, or the organization that you work in. You have a lot of different options as far as the permissions that you can set. And once you make the settings change to the folder, it applies to everything in the folder. It's a huge time saver. So I'm gonna click save. Done. 
And now I've done that. And now moving forward, everything I pull out of there, I'm good to go. I don't have to check, I don't have to change or adjust my settings. So I jump back into my Google Sites. To create a new site. So these are all the sites I've already created. To create a new one, you come down here to your plus sign and just click on that. And up populates your frame for your new site. And what the first thing is that you wanna do or that I suggest doing is giving it a name so that you can find it easily if you end up getting, you know, your, your internet pops out or you get called away to somebody who needs help and you want to be able to find it again. You just want to make sure that you, you give it a name. So then if you were to jump back into your drive, now you're able to locate this Google site right within the, the drive. You can also change this at any time. Totally up to you. So now if I wanted to find it, I just want to make sure I show you that. The easiest way to do that would be to go to recent and then there it is. You click on it and it'll open it up in a new tab. So Katie, there was a question. Is this actually a website that anybody can access? Depending on what settings you, you provide, yes, anybody can access it. Mm -hmm. If you only want your students or their parents to be able to access it, you can change the permission settings uh, and, and then it would just be maybe a classroom site. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you want to do again is, at least that I recommend doing, is select your theme so that you, you know, have what you want to move forward from. And you, you have a few options. Simple. This one looks pretty nice. This is where your font styles and colors for your line dividers come from. It's, these are all your layout elements. Within a theme, you can adjust your accent colors. You can, you can make changes to these if you want. And you have different options for font style. Once you make these changes, it's gonna apply to all of your slides. I'm sorry, all of your pages. And they have a few to choose from. I'm gonna stick with simple for, for today's training just to show you what it looks like. The standard header, this is your header at the top of your site. It's pretty plain and boring. So you can customize your header by clicking on it. You have your two options here. The first is header type. And if you select this option, you can change this, the size of it. You have title only, which is gonna give you more room to add content within the site page. Banner, which is what we had it set at. And that's the default every time you create a new page. A larger banner. And then cover. change that. So then you have change image and you have a lot of different options within here. You can upload directly from your desktop. Now mine's, I have Google Drive on here, but, and this will take you to your desktop. So you can, if you have pictures saved there or images there, you can drop, you can drag them right from there onto your site, or you can select an image from this gallery of options and they have a lot and they are really nice. And I like that they have different colors. So if you want to make each of the pages within your website different colors, but along the same theme, you have the option to do that. You can also 
if you have a picture that you like and you know what the image URL is, you can copy and paste that right in here. And then if it's correct, you'll see what the image preview is and then you can put it right in. You can search, you can do a Google search and as long as it is you know, copyright safe, you're good to go. You don't wanna take any pictures that have restrictions for copyright. Um, even if it's a private, web, or a private website that you're not sharing out, it's just good practice to make sure that you're using uh, free images. I'm not gonna click on my albums because I have student pictures in there, but it'll take you to uh, any albums that you, that you have also on your desktop. And then your Google Drive, that'll let you pull pictures from anything that is shared with you from your own drive, shared drives, and recent. So it gives you a lot of options for you know changing your header so let's get rid of this boring one and put in a little galaxy as you see as i'm changing my image this little pop-up says adjusting for readability it makes it look the most uh, it has the nicest look based on what Google decides, like they, they change the settings of your image to make it appear the nicest. You can go ahead and remove that if you feel like they didn't do your picture justice and you like it better in its original format. Um, I think they do a pretty good job of making the pictures look nicer. So you can also undo that if you'd like to. You can also tell pretty easily if a picture didn't format correctly or if it looks a little fuzzy, and then you can just come in and change that out. I like, I think the next thing we should talk about is how to add a page. We've, we've customized our homepage and we've given it a name, professional development. <clears throat> Let's add more pages. If you already know what kind of content you want to have in your site. You can add as many pages as you want and just kind of frame everything out before you get started. So you go to the pages tab right here and then click the add page icon, which is down here. You do have two options. We're going to talk about the new page option first. Click there and give your, your uh, new page a name. Day one, click done. And let's say we can click day two. And as, as many as you want, you can put down in here. So say I want to, within my professional development, if I'm doing two trainings in one day, and I wanna make sure that I'm linking to maybe a morning session and an afternoon session, you can also add sub pages within. And you just click on, so what I did here was, I went to, the page that I want to add a sub page for. And I clicked on these three dots here. And what I can do is I can make a copy of this page. I can add a sub page. I can delete it or I can hide it. But I want to add a sub page. And I'm going to call it morning. You're going to see a triangle pop up. And now I have a, a subheading. And if you can, as you can see, Google adds this really nice navigation menu across the top of your screen automatically, which is very nice. You don't have to format that in yourself. Uh, Google goes right ahead and does it for you. And if you were to click on here, out pops your subheadings. Really nice if you are you know, creating classes and you wanna put assignments within or students and you want to put any sort of specific information in one tab, you can put up to five. So if I wanted to put morning and then another subheading and another subheading, you can go up to five. You can move these things around. And if I decide that I wanted to make day one, my If I wanted to make day one my home page, I could just click on that and select make home page. I could also, and there's a lot you can do just in here as far as creating your pages. I could also choose to hide these from my navigation bar. If I only want my home page to show up, 
I can choose to hide that from my navigation screen. And right there, it immediately disappears. I can show that back. You can make changes to each of your headers in here and it won't make a difference as far as what your home page looks like. And you would just use the same process that we did on the first page to make any of those changes as far as your header type and your image. And if you want to go back to what it looked like originally, you would just hit this reset button. So before I move on, Sheila, do we have any questions about what we've done so far? Uh, no, not in the chat. Okay, perfect. We've created some pages within sites. You can also add a custom link to an external site. So if I would like people accessing my Google site personally to have the option of being able to access the IU webpage, I'm gonna type that in there. give it a name. I would like it to open in a new tab so it doesn't take me away from my page. And then click done. It's gonna show up as a link. And then as a separate tab right here. And then when, as, when this is a live document, you could click on this and you'll be able to do it now. And it'll open you up and redirect you to the IU page. So if you have, if you're using this maybe as an academic resource and your students are always using something like uh, maybe vocabulary. That's something that I use a lot in my classroom. You could put the link right there and that way they don't need to always be logging into it. They could just grab that right there and it'll take them to the resource that they need to get to. So we have our framework for our site pretty well mapped out. Let's talk about a few different ways to add content. You go to the insert tab here and this is where you see your content creation tools and this is this is the most basic way to add your items. Of all of these you're going to primarily use your text box and your image tool Clicking on the text box puts a text box right there and it adds it to your page. It's really handy and easy to use just for adding any kind of text-based content. So you can also use it to hyperlink to other pages. So the way to do that is simply to copy the address at the top of the page that you want to hyperlink to. Oh, my little Zoom thing keeps getting in the way. Okay, copy that link, then go back to your site. Highlight the word that you want to become a clickable link. And then up here you have all these options. You want to click on this little chain this chain link icon in the toolbar. And now what you're going to do is hit control V. Control V is your copy, or I'm sorry, paste. So you're pasting that link right into here and then hit apply. Now, now you want to make sure that you did the right thing. You can click on this and it'll show you a preview of what you put in. If you say, oh, that's the wrong thing, I didn't mean to do that, you can, you can edit that. Or if you decide that you want to take the hyperlink out altogether, you can come in and you can remove it and it won't delete your text. You can adjust the size of your text box. And if you see here in the middle, there's a set of eight dots. If you click here, 
that means that makes it possible for you to move this around. So you can move it to fit around pictures, images, any, any other thing that you put into your site, you can place your text around. So you're not necessarily um, stuck with wherever the text goes, you need to work around it or you need to put a picture below it. You can embed things within and, and kind of make your layout look however you want. They do give you some preset layouts, which are really nice and make it easy, especially if, you're, if it's not, if it doesn't come easy to you coming up with a, a layout design, they give you these preset ones, which I, I go to a lot, but they're not they're not required. You don't have to use them. So I just Katie, yeah. there's a, a question that came up. Um, sure. Are you able to change the background where the text is located so it's not just plain white? Yes, you are. If you see here, there's a palette. Um, this button here and, a, and then a button there. The top one here is your section background. And if you click on that, you get a few different options. This is what regular looks like. And within your themes, you'll see differences. And then you could even upload an image from some options. So these are all of my pictures that I've put in here for my for the website and for the oh this is it so I could put that in as well anything that you are able to save yep you can do that and then if I don't like it you just undo it yes you do have a you do have a few options as far as making some changes and divisions between the sections see. As far as text boxes are concerned, that's pretty much all I have for them. They are pretty nice. It's, you can do a lot with them. And it they give you just this as far as what your font is. I don't really get into the changing the font by going into that's kind of like coding information. I don't, I don't go into that. I use what they give me and I, I don't, I don't really sweat it otherwise. Um, so you can insert over here, like said, come over here to your content tools and find your text box, or you can come over to the part of the screen that you want to insert something into and double click and your content creation tools wheel pops up. It's the same exact tools. They're just over here now. So you can click on insert text or you can insert an image. This is embed, which is the same as this over here. You're inserting from the drive, which is that same over there. And then this would be uploading from your desktop. So images, you have a lot of options when you're, when you're talking about images. So if I click on my images option, it's the same as, as before as far as uploading something for your uh, themes. You can copy and paste an image. You can do a Google image search for any sort of copyright free picture. You can look in your drive. And if you find a picture and you want to drag it out, you can do that or you can select the picture. and it goes right into the spot that you have double clicked. It's very easy to resize. And if I want to move it around, I just click and, um, I just click and drag. I can Idiot also question. do, sorry. Yes, yeah, sure, no problem. Um, a question just came up from Glormark. I think you're addressing that right now. It says, can you add a text box anywhere such as next to the PD um, above. Next to this? Mm -hmm. Yes. If I click and drag, you can add it below. I'm not, I'm not quite, I'm not sure about next to it, but let's, let's try it out. Yes. You can. 
it's just about resizing things a little bit. And it's, as long as you can, you know, change the parameters of your text box and move things around a little bit, you're able to make some changes as far as how things are laid out within your site. As far as your image is, con is concerned, you can do a lot of really neat things with your images too. Uh, you can crop them, like I think you can do with most other things. You can also uncrop it. So if you decide you don't like what you did to it, you can just, that's almost like the undo button. A lot of times when you insert an image, Google will automatically crop it for you to fit the spot that you chose. And if you don't like that, this is another thing you can do. Hit this button and it'll uncrop it for you. I don't know if you've ever tried to, if you've ever fiddled around with this before and you tried to embed a document and it puts it in and it looks all wonky and you're trying to uh, drag the ends of this to make it fit or you wanna make your document look nice and it takes forever and it's super frustrating, you just hit this button and it, and it makes it the exact size that you need it to be so that you can see the entire thing. You can hyperlink this and it'll take, it can take you to a website. You can delete it. And then you have a few other options here. You can change the image, replace it with something else. So you like where it is, you think it's perfectly placed. So you want to put a different picture, but you want it to go exactly there. I would recommend this option. This option is for, right here it says screen readers, for people who might have trouble seeing your content. And that's where you put your descriptive text in. When a person clicks on the picture, this is gonna read a description of what they're seeing. That's the default. Um, if you were to click this, it, this is what would be read when somebody clicked on the image. It would say this is a decorative image. And then you can also add a caption. And that'll come below. They are really nice uh, as far as being able to move them around and make changes. I like that, that you, can, you don't have to be stuck to a certain theme. You can do kind of whatever you want. Google has also added the ability to embed an entire web page as, uh, as a frame in this new Google site, which allows you to pull content in from other websites. It's a little tricky to play with, but you would select embed from your insert menu and then choose by the URL. You just have to be sure uh, that you're choosing a website that allows embedding because I was playing around with it and I kept trying to embed the IU page and it wouldn't work because they don't allow embedding. So. Way. Put insert for some reason, it's going to show a weird little box. Maybe, there, maybe this page doesn't allow that either. So like I said, it's a little tricky as far as making sure you find a website that it might not because I'm signed in. That could be the problem. So if I signed out and then tried it again, that, that could be the issue that we're running into here. Uh, so that's why I say play around with it. But it's nice, again, like so if you have a, a link that your students access a lot, you can embed it here and then your students can get right to it. And another neat thing about embedding things is the whole page will actually embed the full functioning web page on your preview. So if you went into the embed and you are, once you get your code in, you can click whole page 
is what we're seeing here. And if this actually were able to go in, the students would be able to access features of that website within your website, which is, which is pretty cool. You can also put in like JavaScript uh, if, if that's available, but I've only ever seen people really do it for like Twitter feeds or YouTube videos. And they also added the add a YouTube video option, which we'll get into later. So um, that's a little bit of kind of like next steps um, material. So I'm going to just go to the next thing. And then if we have a little bit of time, maybe I'll show you how to do that. To rearrange things, you just, like I've been doing, click and drag until you see, so if you see the blue line, that means we are gonna join these things together. If I wanna pull this out, now it's down below, in a new section, you just double click to choose one, pull it apart, and now they're separated. I'm actually gonna get rid of that. You can include line dividers. I really like that because it creates a nice division between your sections. It's a very clear way of seeing where one section ends and another begins if you don't like um, using your, your emphasis. Because that one, I mean, it's very difficult to even see. But I like, I like the use of line dividers for sure. You can do something like Uploading an image. And then you could put another line divider underneath it. And I think it's just a nice clean look. I just wanted you to be able to see these little banner things. I thought they, they kind of look nice. Um, and then as you make this bigger, the rest of it will pop in. And then below that, I can put another divider and move on. Now this is all on one page. I could be doing this on, an, on other pages as well, but I kind of just wanted to show you all the different things that you can do within your site. something has to be in a section. So if I put a text box in and then I went away, it's, there's nothing that's gonna be here. Eventually it would disappear. So if I went onto another page and came back, this wouldn't be here. It would just be a bunch of empty spaces. So we've done some work and we wanna see what it looks like. This is really cool, I think, because we are not always accessing our websites from a computer. I think we're, we're rarely doing that, except for maybe recently. So you come up to this top part of your screen here and click preview. Now you get the option, it starts out letting you preview it in what it might look like in a desk, on a desktop. You also have the option to see what students or anybody would be looking at from a tablet. This is the tablet view. And then you also can see what, what your website would look like on a phone. I really like that option. Because you get to see how things are formatting and if you know that your students are gonna be checking things out from your phone or if parents are gonna be looking at the information from a phone, you can maybe like tweak, tweak things a little bit to make sure that you're sharing content in the most appropriate way. You take a look at that and then exit preview. So that's pretty much the basics. I would consider there's a few other things that I will get into, but I also wanna show you first how to publish your site. The things that you do before you publish, and I have to say, 
I did not do this last night and I had to go back and edit every single slide in my slide deck because I noticed it right before the end of the night is proofread and edit your site for grammatical errors. I spelled a word wrong and then I had to go back and change it on everything. So that is definitely something you want to make sure you do before you go live. Check all your hyperlinks to make sure that they work. If you are using something that needs to be credited, make sure that you do so. I would check things out on all of those devices too. So you could log in and look at the website from a phone just to see what it looks like. So everything here auto saves. Again, so if you get booted, you can come back in and pick up right where you left off, which is great. Nobody can see any of this except for me until I actually publish these changes. The very first time I click publish, I need to give my website an address. This is my default that they're giving me as my, this is the default name. And that's what I'm gonna go with today. And then I can also, like we did with our folder, determine who can visit this, web, this website. And that's where I believe we had a question earlier about who gets to see what you're posting. So you could click manage and I can say anybody that I work with can see my website or I can say anybody can find and view this website. So that would make it, you know, a live site that anybody gets to see or specific people and they need to be given access by me by name. And then you can invite people. Now, if you send somebody an email invite, you're giving them access to edit unless you make this change, can view published. So you have to make sure that you go in and change that setting before you send out the email. Because if, unless you want them to be able to do so, you're, you're giving other people access to view and make changes to your website which is great if you're trying to do a collaborative website or you're, you want to do that wiki assignment or students making edits to things. But if that's not what your goal is, then you want to make sure that you keep your permissions for editing locked up. Okay. So we have our name, we have our permissions, we're ready to hit publish. Your site has been successfully published and I can see what it looks like here. And now my little chain link has been active or activated. I can click that and now I have the option to copy a link to my site. And that's what you can share out with people. And based on your permissions, you can, you know, whoever has access or the ability to see your site, you just send them that and they can click on it and it'll take them right to your website. Right here are your publishing options. You can change this if you want to, but then you have to reshare that link because the uh, old one will be dead. You can review your changes and publish, and I'll show you that in a second. You can view your site, which is the same as preview. Katie, there's a question. Can you delete a published site? Yes, you can. Right here is unpublish. You can take it off so it's no longer public. And then from your home, your like main landing page where you can view all of your sites, you can completely delete the entire thing. So you would unpublish here, which I can do right now. Nobody will be able to see it. It won't be live. And then my publish button will come back up. Anytime you hit publish, it'll ask you to review your changes and it'll show you a side by side. Actually. So now I, I take this out and I go to publish. It's going to show me a side by side of the changes that I made. Here's the draft and this is what's already up on the site so that you are able to 
verify that those are the changes that you want to make and it looks exactly how you would like it to look before you actually publish, which is really nice. And it's a newer feature. They didn't, they didn't always have this as a feature. There was also another question. It says, can you click on multiple modes at the same time? Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking that was the tablet. Um, John, if you want to elaborate the tablet, the phone, the desktop, is that what you were talking about with your question? Uh, yeah, that's what I wondered when we were on the other, the other page, uh, when she had it on the bottom, can you click them all at the same time and that would be suitable or do you have to do it one at a time? You mean, do you mean this page? Correct. You have to do them one at a time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much, this is the basics as far as getting off the ground with starting a site. There are so many things that you can do with your own classroom site. Uh, I didn't really jump into Google Drive yet, but you could even post an entire folder of resources for your kids to access, um, which is really, really cool. And I'd actually like to show you what that looks like. And I think rather than doing it, I want to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to jump out of here really quickly. Some of the other things that you can do. And I have this actual site linked. There we go. Uh, in the resources of our website, of our um, slide deck. So you can see this, you can access it and um, pull from it if you'd like to. So you can embed a folder. If you have information that you want to share with your students and, and you have a lot of it and you're going to be frequently adding to it, you can share the folder. And then anytime they click on it, say I wanted to add something right now, I could go into my Google Drive, put something into the folder and it would update automatically on the site. The same is true with for my calendar. If I go into my, this is my Google Classroom calendar. If I go into my classroom and add an assignment, it will pop up as due on my website calendar. So that's a nice way of integrating a, a, class, a classroom and a site with resources and due dates. You can also embed files like YouTube files. You just have to make sure that it's a public file. You can even make a playlist and it would be the same as up here with your drive folder that you can always be adding resources to. You can always be adding resources to your YouTube playlist. Like they have um, drawing, drawing with Mo Willem, Willems or Williams. And he, he's always adding to that. So if you add your, that file or that folder into your playlist on your homepage of your website, that's constantly being updated, that, his playlist. So you don't have to constantly change your videos out. The playlist updates automatically. You can also change settings with when your document is live. You can say, I would like my slide deck to be on autoplay. So as soon as somebody shows up on your site, the PowerPoint is playing and I want it to play over and over and over again. That would be loop play playback, or I just want it to play the one time. And if you wanted to start at a different slide other than slide one, you can indicate that as well. You can embed forms and just regular plain old documents as well. I know I'm kind of flying through this end part, which is why I made this site that has these step-by-step -step directions because I, I was a little worried that I would be running out of time at the end and I wanted to make sure I left time for questions or comments. So I'm gonna jump out of this site and go back into the slide deck 
so you can just see what it is you'll have access to. I kind of broke everything down and did a a step by step overview of the things that we did today. With some descriptions of what everything looks like and how to find all of these things. And then here are our resources. That'll take you right to the G Suite Learning Center that Google has created itself. And then I've also put in a few sample sites for you to look at. Right here, this is all of the cheat sheets for all of the Google things. Uh, I think it's just nice to have if you're looking for you know, nice ways to use docs, slides, or sheets. You can, you can access this. And then the site that I just pulled information from for you is right here. The other, the other pages just give you additional information about things that you can do within Google Sites. But I, I think that especially if you're having an issue, maybe getting a student from one school district to join a classroom within your Google Classroom, at least for now, your, your Sites option is really a great tool for sharing information and resources with a lot of people easily and quickly. Um, and a lot of different people can do this at once. You can have multiple people collaborating. You can also link to so many different pages. And so this page right here is a separate website. So if I want one student to be able to edit this page, I can do that because I know the fear would be, well, if I'm going to have my students building their own websites, what if, what if student two goes in and edits student ones? Well, the way that you would do, the way that you would fix that would be to create a completely separate, see if you come down here, a completely separate website for each student and then link it back to your home site. It takes like a little bit of work in the beginning, but then once it's all linked together, you're fine, you're done. And then you would give edit access to each student individually. Katie, there's a, a couple of questions. Perfect. Um, can you have a Google website without a classroom setup? This is from a school counselor. Absolutely. Do you mean if you don't have G Suite for Education like, or if you don't have a Google Classroom? Janine, would you like to uh, Elaborate. Yes, um, if, I, if I don't have a Google Classroom set up. Mm -hmm. As long as if you click on this waffle here and you see the option to select sites, you can create one. Okay, I think I do through the Allentown School District. Yep, you should be able to. Yeah, you do not need Google Classroom to create a Google site. Okay, thank you. Sure. Let me get back to here. Okay. And then somebody was interested, I know the slides will be available. Are you able to tell them how to access those? Sure, let me go to this one. This is your, oh no, that's not it, hold on. I will drop this into the chat right now. I think you have to also put in the HTTPS, but that's the bit.ly for that site. I don't think that'll take you right to the site. Let me see. Oh, no, it did. Okay. Let me also get you the um, Act 48 exit ticket. And if they're using Class Dojo, can you um, just share the link in Class Dojo? And yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, let me hear the rest of the question first. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much it. it. You know, can they just share the link in Class Dojo and they can connect to your site? Yes. Mm -hmm. You do not need to send it in an email. Yeah, I'm seeing it right now because I just. Yep. Oh, you know what? 
disregard what I just sent. It's this right here. CLIU Ready PD, if you copy and paste the second one, that is your Act 48. Um, I know this was a lot of information all at once, but I really like Google Sites. I think um, it it's a nice and quick and easy way to share a ton of information with a lot of different people, you know, not just your students, you can share it with parents. And that's what we use to get all of these professional developments and all of these extra resources out that that's a Google site. So um, just a really fabulous resource that we have available to us. And I don't know that we necessarily access it a lot. So I'll stop talking and let you guys ask questions. I don't see any questions that are popping up. Okay, good. We've covered um, all the ones that are there. Most people are saying that this has been very helpful. Good. I'm, I'm very glad. Well, then, it, you know, this right here is one of your sample sites that'll show you if you're if you're really interested in in getting a teacher site off the ground, but you're not really sure how you want to frame it. These are some samples that you can check out. There's elementary, middle school, and high school. Just some examples of really nice ways to do it, as as well as you know other other um, introductory ways to get started. If you're like, I get it, but I don't get it, and I need to hear it in a different way because we all learn things differently. There's other people explaining things as well, because I know that I need to read things about thirty times and see things about forty times. So, uh, a question that just came up is. Um just like what you're showing right now, how do you get your options on the side, like that this website? Oh, sure, that's a great question. Let me find mine. So I have to move my little pictures out of the way. You click on this little cogwheel up here and you have some options that pop up. You have your navigation options and you can choose it to be on the top or on the side. And those options can either be transparent, which is the default, they can be white, or they can be black. And so then I would, because it's closed right now, then it'll pop up over here on the side. Some additional options you can also, um, if you ever check out some of our websites, we have logos. And if you're able to save a, a very small image, you can upload that and it'll pop up next to your picture. I'm sorry, next to your, the title of your website. I don't, I don't go into viewer tools or analytics because to be, to be honest, I know very little about that. So um, if that's something that you're interested in learning about, I would suggest just kind of looking into it um, on your own because I don't want to give you information that's incorrect. Um, and then, so I always like it to be transparent. I just think it looks cleaner. Let me see, make sure I didn't miss anything else. If you have multiple people that are interacting on your site, and they make changes, you can see what, what the changes were that were made. Even if you weren't the one that made it, you can look at the history and you can check that out. Also really nice. Um, just to clarify, there's another question about the slide deck. Yes, they are going to be shared. Um, you could pretty much access them the same place that you access this professional development mm -hmm. um, through the CLIU Ready site, correct? Yes, as soon as this training is over, I'm going to email this slide deck and the uh, the video of this training and email it so that it gets put right up on the site. It should be up before the end of the day because it's already it's early afternoon. Mm -hmm. And then another question when you want to share a site from YouTube, how do you know it's a public site? 
a public, you mean when you want to share a video? It'll have copyright information like in the in the YouTube site usually. So if you go to YouTube, a lot of times, oh, it's gonna start playing. Oh no, it's quiet. Um, if you're not able to copy it, this will probably be something that we're gonna be able to copy. Hi, welcome to a brief overview of GoGuardian TV. Because we can copy it, it allows you to copy your code or your URL. But if you are scrolling around on here, you'll be able to tell within this information here what the copyright information is. So you'll, you should be able to find that within here. But as long as you're giving um, at the end of your site, or if you even just kind of like at the bottom, because you can put a footer. So that keeps happening. Some of the drawing thing, I don't know how that, I don't know if anybody can see that, but you can add a footer and you could always just put um, credit to, and then put that information all the way at the bottom and make it very, and you could make it small and then and then you're fine as far as like YouTube video credit too. And then you would be okay. All right. I am going to keep, I will stay on here for a little bit longer in case anybody else has questions, but I don't, I, I don't want to keep you if you need to get going. Um, Again, I'll, I'll send all of this out to you guys. I appreciate that you were taking the time um, to come and learn about Google Sites. So um, thank you all very much. I appreciate it and have a nice afternoon.